The tank swap mechanic is electrified jaws, taunt off after each one. There will be blue swirls all over the floor, dodge them or they stun you for like half a second. Three of your raid members will get static charges. Place these apart behind the raid and they will leave a big puddle. They do proximity damage to the raid so just be aware. Once the boss reaches 100 energy, she'll cast Hurricane Wing, pushing all players back. You need to make sure your back is to one of these giant puddles to slow you so you don't fly off the platform. She'll also face a random raid member and cast a lightning breath. Dodge this, it's a one shot. Everyone in your raid will be affected by a volatile current blue circle. Spread and it will spawn a volatile spark. You need to interrupt, stun, CC, or purge your spark before it explodes. Once the boss reaches 65% health, it's the first intermission phase. Half of your raid goes to one side of the platform and the other half goes to the other side. She'll knock both sides to the lower platforms. Focus the surging ruiners. Once their shield is broken, they'll spawn adds. Interrupt and AoE these down. In this phase, she'll cast lightning breath down a line on the platform and always goes through the center just make sure to dodge it. On Heroic, the Surging Ruiners will mark random players with Surging Blast. Just need to spread for this. Once both sides have killed their three Ruiners, take the portals to the back platform for Phase 2. She'll cast an ability called Storm Surge, which puts a giant damage absorption bubble on herself. Half of your raid will have a tornado over their head, and the other half will have an orb. You need to stack with your group that has the same marker to get a big DPS buff to break the shield. On Heroic, if you come into contact with someone who has the opposite buff, it does an AoE damage to the raid. In this phase, she casts Tempest Wing, run against it towards the boss. A few players will get Fulminating Charge. These are giant blue circles. These people will be slowed, so they need to try to get out of the group while the rest of the group gets away from them. Abilities like Hand of Freedom or Post Haste Disengage will allow them to move as normal speed. Voltile Current still happens in this phase, so make sure to get rid of your ad. Once the Vault Integrity reaches 0%, it's Intermission 2. A Colossal Storm Fiend will spawn that needs to be killed. Orbs will come out of it, just watch out for those. After some time, it'll cast Stormbreak and teleport to a new location. Its previous location will have small Stormlings. These need to be slowed, stunned, and killed before they reach the Storm Fiend. On Heroic, these Stormlings need to die at the same time roughly because when one dies, they buff the rest with an AoE ability that hurts the raid. Razageth will do breaths during this phase. After the Colossal Storm Fiend has died, it's on to phase 3. Your raid needs to stack in a position so when Razageth blows you back, you land on the original platform. Now it's a DPS race. The new tank mechanic is Thunderous Blast. It will hit the tank with a large amount of nature damage, then hit the raid with that nature damage. The tank needs to mitigate this damage to reduce the damage that it deals to the raid. This replaces the beam from phase 1, so no one should be on the tank ever. Fulminating charges still happen in this phase, as well as Tempest Wing. On Heroic in this phase, a random raid member will get Magnetic Charge. It looks similar to Static Charge in phase 1, except this will yank all players to that person. And then in this phase, an encroaching storm will engulf the platform so you need to kill her before it takes over, and that's Razageth and the entire Vault of the Incarnate's Raid.